Hi there, good afternoon. This is Pristina, the capital of Kosovo. I just arrived a little while ago. And checked into my hotel room, which is just a few minutes walk away and decided to uh, just head out and go for a walk. Wander around, get my first uh, taste of this very interesting looking city. I'm walking towards Skanderbeg Square. For anyone who saw my video of Tirana, Albania, the central square there is also called Skanderbeg Square. Skanderbeg was a warrior in the 15th century Istanbul. So that uh, fits into what I'm just about to say. Quick uh, detour. What is this? Ornament? It's like a business? Like a mirror store? So Istanbul donor, Skanderbeg, fought against the Ottomans. Istanbul, Turkey, is the remains of the Ottoman Empire. So back in the 1400s, then Skanderbeg was fighting to repel the Ottoman Empire out of this part of the world. Skanderbeg was basically an Albanian. He was unsuccessful in getting them to, you know, leave this area and the Ottoman Empire reigned over this region for another 400 years until 1912 when Albania, to be clear, gained independence from the Ottoman Empire but of course, the history of Kosovo is quite different. I'm just remarking on that because Skanderbeg Square, so that's who Skanderbeg is. But... Kosovo here is inhabited by a lot of Albanian-speaking people. And so thus the Skanderbeg Square, which you will see in the course of this video, if I can find it, I'm sure that I will, it is close by. This guy is texting and driving. Not exactly driving, at least. And so the uh, history of Kosovo, of course, diverges significantly from Albania in that uh, Kosovo became part of Yugoslavia. Yugoslavia means South Slavic, the South Slavic countries. They were unified for decades during the reign of communism in this part of the world. I think this is Skanderbeg Square right over here. And so Kosovo was part of Yugoslavia, which broke apart, of course, in 1991, as communism fell throughout this part of the world in many different countries, Soviet Union and other Eastern European countries. But all was not well and peaceful after Yugoslavia broke up and these uh, different countries emerged. Ibrahim Rugova. 
Not sure who that is, but uh, I will put a subtitle explaining, but uh, this must be Skanderbeg. And so Yugoslavia broke apart into countries along sort of rough linguistic, ethnic, cultural lines, although there were similarities, of course, with the Slavic element. And Kosovo was one of the countries that really got caught in the middle of things. And there was terrible fighting here, especially in the late 90s, 98 and 99, in which the United States got involved, basically on the side of Kosovo. And Bill Clinton and the United States are very much uh, respected throughout Kosovo for what they see as helping to liberate or at least ensure their freedom as a separate country, which Serbia does not agree with. It is what it is. And for now then, Kosovo is, for all practical purposes, a separate country. However, when I was looking at flights out of Pristina here, when I used Skyscanner, then it said Pristina, Kosovo. I think that was the one where it said Kosovo. I was checking another site, it might have been Expedia, and it said Pristina, Serbia. And on Google Maps, it shows the border as a dotted line. That's what Google does with uh, various borders around the world for Kashmir, Western Sahara, etc., in which there is a strong dispute of... Okay, there's a uh, guy lying in the road here. I'm not going to show him. But that's what the sound is coming from. Kosovo is not officially recognized by the United Nations as being an independent nation, along with, for example, Taiwan. However, Kosovo is recognized by 114 countries around the world as being independent. 114 out of, depending on how you count it, 193, 195, 197. So, in other words, more than half of the countries of the world acknowledge Kosovo as a separate nation. So those are just kind of the straight facts. As much as I know so far, which is not a lot, but uh, I'm definitely learning and very intrigued by this country. So I came today from Prizren, the second largest city of Kosovo. I was there for five days. I crossed the border from Albania into Prizren. And then uh, have three nights booked at my hotel here, and I'll see after that, as I mentioned, checking flights. I'm trying to decide where I'm going next. I have no idea. I could fly out of here in like three days to somewhere, considering various options that I have in mind, but uh, nothing is uh, nailed down yet. I'm thinking about renting a car, so I actually mentioned in my uh, videos in Prizren that I was planning to rent a car there. I had talked to a guy yesterday who had a car available and 
said that I could return it here in Pristina, which is what I wanted, for like 66 bucks for two days, including the drop-off, so like $70 or $35 per day. So that was a uh, perfect deal. But this morning when I called him back, the number didn't work. It was saying like, this number is not currently available, which is like something that I've never quite heard from, you know, the operator, you know, the uh, recorded message. Usually it's like, this number is not in service or it just rings and nobody picks up or whatever. But uh, the phone worked yesterday and not today. So I tried other places and nobody answered the phone at any of the car rental places in prison. So, point being, you're probably better off trying to rent a car here in Pristina. So, I may or may not end up doing that. It's a matter of whether I'm in the mood for the whole sort of hassle of the car, rental experience and then somebody also kind of warned about uh, the police giving foreigners a hard time with rental cars and not really feeling like the uh, hassle at the moment. So another statue, Zahir Pahaziti, hero, Populit. Very likely a war hero of the 90s war. Now normally I try to uh, give some money to street musicians, especially if I film them, but it's in my backpack, it's like I'm filming, it's just a hassle. Maybe I'll give him some change when I walk back through. So I'll just see uh, if I'm going to rent the car because I really do want to see more of the country. I wanted to see some of the smaller towns, go on a classic road trip, Gabriel Traveler style, in which I end up stopping here and there and abandoned ruined buildings and finding weird things. Hey there, how's it going? Do some real exploration, so we'll see. Thinking about it, but I will definitely uh, capture more of Pristina while I'm here. So there is a Bill Clinton statue. It's about a mile away. So Probably won't show it in this video, I'm just doing a random, wandering, unedited walkthrough on my first day here. So in uh, Prisoner, I had kind of a classic experience with a guy who was like super gung-ho that I was American and like, was like really thankful and stuff. It's like, you know, I was a traveler in my 20s when it happened, just like traveling around and doing my thing. I had nothing to do with it, but uh, he was just stoked to meet an American and very uh, sort of thankful and enthusiastic and stuff. And so he was saying like, thumbs up to Bill Clinton, but he was also like George Bush fan as well. So I guess it isn't really like Bill Clinton and the Democrats. It's just thankful to America in general. This is a pretty... Uh, happening city, as you can see. Lots of, uh, restaurants. Lots of people out and about. Notice nobody wearing masks. That was the case in Albania as well. Not sure to what extent it's a matter of they never really had restrictions here much or a matter of things relaxing in general around the world 
even in the United States, mask mandates are dropped everywhere now. I think Hawaii is dropping theirs very soon, and they're like the last state. So it's looking like some good news in the pandemic department. We can hope that uh, we're on the downward side of the hill with things improving and hopefully no more out of control variants. Not that it's over by any means. They're having major outbreaks in China right now. All right, so in my uh, video of Tirana, Albania, a couple people had complained that uh, I only showed mosques and not churches. So here we got a church. Looks like a new one. Just kind of glancing at it. Looks kind of like they're doing the finishing touches. Here you got all these construction blocks. And so, Kosovo is kind of this mixing point of various cultures. The Kosovo flag has six stars on it that represent the six ethnic groups of Kosovo. And I don't remember all of them, but uh, it was Albanian, Serbian, Turkish, uh, Bosniak, Gorani, which I'm not familiar with. Things are definitely uh, sort of getting bigger and more city-like this way. If you go to an ATM, then you will be presented with three different languages to use the ATM in. Albanian, Serbian, English. At least that was my experience in prison. I haven't yet researched like the main things to uh, see here in Pristina. And so this is a completely random wander. It seems like I'm hitting some interesting uh, areas other than just Skanderberg Square was our Skanderbeg was the only thing I had in mind to uh, walk through but uh, it is very interesting quite a sort of cosmopolitan feeling I mean more so than I expected quite a modern city definitely Fairly scruffy in parts. Kind of a mix of uh, the more modern and newer buildings, and then the older, like Soviet style construction, and then older than that, just from what I've seen of like the smaller neighborhoods of probably older homes that go back early 20th century, 19th century, and of course older. So much history in this part of the world. Various layers of empires that occupied this region at different times. And if you're wondering about, like, prices of things here in Kosovo, it is, like, surprisingly inexpensive. I expected it to be, you know, fairly cheap, but uh, I got into Prizren, and it was just kind of a little bit mind-blowing how you're looking on the menu, and, like, main courses are, like, two to four euros. I mean, this is, like... You know, order everything, whatever you feel like. Have five beers if you want, and your bill is only going to be 
you know, if you just go crazy, maybe you'll spend like 20 bucks or something. Or you can have an amazing meal for uh, like 10, you know, 12 euros or so with a couple of drinks, multiple dishes. Rooms are very affordable. I haven't been getting like the cheapest rooms. It's 60 bucks. The one that I have here, but uh, it's pretty nice and perfect location. Very clean, fast Wi-Fi. So, uh, you know, if you're like a digital nomad and you want somewhere affordable to base yourself, then uh, this is looking like a good option. Prizren, if you want a smaller town, a much mellower uh, city, but it also isn't particularly happening from what I saw in Prizren. It was very nice to visit for a couple of days, but uh, if I was looking to like base myself somewhere, I might go with Pristina if I was, you know, thinking about Kosovo. Just because there's obviously a lot more going on here, a lot more choices of things to do and people to meet and everything. I'm sure that you could get an apartment for just dirt cheap. And then there's a 5G Wi-Fi in my room. I haven't checked the actual speeds yet, but it seems good and fast. Same in Prizren, very fast Wi-Fi in Prizren. All right, just uh, walk up here a little ways and then probably end this video and uh, head back to the room to get back to work editing my next one. It looks like things are kind of petering out as far as much action. Nice shoe selection. Second hand shop. Here we go, rent a car. But not gonna deal with that for now. All right. That's it for Christina for now. Maybe uh, I will film some more in the coming couple of days. We'll see. Later.